Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for today. Uh, this is a continuation of my controller guide series. We're on two munitions this time. Uh, as in my previous guides, uh, the controller section is going to be limited. This is going to be focused primarily on the DPS side of munitions. Uh, if you want a more focused video on controlling, I've got two. I've got my complete controller spec as well as I've got my new controller meta uh, video that uh, focuses more on the controlling side. So I'll just kind of briefly touch over controlling at the end. As usual as well, you, if you check in the comments below, there's going to be a pinned comment from me that's going to be uh, shortcuts to all the timestamps in this video. So if you want to skip to the AOE rotation, the single target, the raids at the end, whatever, they're all going to be in the comments. Uh, at the end of the video, you're going to have two raids uh, sections. You're going to have a TTBE as well as an SSE showing off the single target and the range rotation. Uh, and then in the coming days, I have uh, a friendly lead comp in Pan E that will show the single target and the melee rotation. So we'll get into the spec right now. In terms of specking, uh, it's exactly the same as a regular DPS. It's going to be a super powered spec. Uh, you're going to max out your critical attack chance, max out your critical attack damage, uh, and then max out might and power. And then everything else, because you're running that Tetrahegon of Ungren, uh, the Might Artifact, uh, that's why you're going to put the rest into health, just to, to buff your uh, your Might when you um, hit a power based on your health. Uh, in terms of everything else, the spec, uh, Iconic Powers, you don't need anything as munitions. Some people are going to take Robot Psychic. Um, robot Psychic, in, in terms of its damage, it's more like a myth than anything else uh like robot psychic in melee range it's great uh as you can turn to one of my past videos uh where i test all the pet damage but robot psychic from range this is what everyone like all you see all those munitions dps and everyone using it for it's not that beneficial it does about 60k damage over the course of a minute which is not that much compared to uh there's plenty of other trinkets that do comparable damage to that and then you've got to worry about resummoning it and the power reduction uh, the power generation. So really, I'm not a fan of running Robot Psychic. I'd much rather find uh, another option. Like say, um, like say for example. So um, if I was going to use like Smoke Grenade Launcher, if I'm going to use that in my rotation, and I'm going to hit that every you know three seconds or whatever in my rotation, Smoke Grenade Launcher is going to hit for you know like 4k, 6k, 8k higher crits. And if you're doing Robot Psychic. You know, it's doing 60k damage in 60 seconds. Well, if I'm using Smoke Grenade Launcher over the course of 60 seconds as well, it's going to do more damage because it's AoE or Robot Psychic single target. So it's in some cases when you have like literally no other powers to use, then like, yeah, you can use Robot Psychic. But I see a lot of munitions DPS always running um, Robot Psychic where it's not a necess um, necessity. Uh, you can always uh, slip in another power. Like basically, everyone says like, "Well, the cooldowns line up." Well, the the cooldown, like the animation on smoke grenade, is very quick. Um, I don't run it in my rotations. I'm going to show you why. But like, say if you don't want to run what I'm running, because munitions is is very subjective. There's a lot of rotations where you could plug in like minigun, five barrel minigun, whatever, and get similar results. But if you're running uh, Robot Sidekick, just use Smoke Grenade Launcher. Just clip it right before, not clip it, but hit it right before you hit Mini Nuke or something. Like, the animation is very quick. And over the course of the raid, you're going to get more damage from Smoke Grenade Launcher than you will Robot Sidekick. But in terms of, um, yeah, super speed. Sorry, we'll get back to it. Kind of lost track there. Uh, I, you can really only take the first four. I take the other two just because if I'm... I'm Using a melee rotation, uh, there's a greater chance I get stunned or knocked back or whatever, and I have to break out. Uh, so I'd rather get a little bit of power return because my melee rotation is more power heavy. I am it's just because I have 404 skill points, I can mess around and take those. You don't have to at all; just take those first four. And weapons, I'm only taking one-handed because I don't need to worry about weapon attacks at all. Munitions is a lot of channel power, so you can barely hit weapon taps anyway. Uh, but yes, we'll explain why I use Killer Instincts. So basically, I use Killer Instincts because in my head mod, I use Critical Instincts 3, which is grants 2% critical strike chance, uh, and I use it to clip mini nuke. Um, we'll get into the critical chance right now. So if I go to my stats, you'll see these are 26 and 26. Now if I use 
AI. We go back down here, and now they're 28. So you, you think the 2% chance doesn't matter that much, but it, if what I, the question I posed to you is, running Big Gun 3 doesn't matter that much as well over the course of an entire raid. If you're just using the, the supercharged generator, it takes you 31 supercharged generators to get to a full big gun. If you just sit there on the sparring targets and just hit shrapnel over and over again, it'll take you 31 times to get to a full big gun. And if I use big gun 3, after I use big gun 3 and get that 10% back, it takes 26. So the only difference is, is 5 shrapnel grenade launchers, which is basically 30 seconds. So if I put big gun 3 in my head... Uh, I'll gain a big gun a maximum of 30 seconds. Like That's not accounting for like weapon taps or anything else, but the maximum is, is roughly 30 seconds. So you'd be getting a big gun 30 seconds faster than someone not using or using KI. But th in the course of an entire raid, 30 seconds you know, is not a make or break thing. Uh, see, the difference is if big gun doesn't crit, then... Uh, if you're both using big gun three and the other guy hits for 400k with his big gun, you hit for 200k. You, you know you're still worse off than you were, except with uh, critical instinct three, you have that two percent attack chance the entire raid. So your your mini nukes, your even your big gun chances, there all the crit chances are increased. So that you're doing more damage over the course of an entire raid rather than just earning a supercharge a bit faster, which may not crit anyways. You have to look at the bigger picture. Uh, like, yeah, you, you'd assume like, all oh, big guns, great supercharge. I need big guns, so I'll use big gun three. The, the 10%, when you actually do the math and, and figure out uh, that it's only like a 30 second window at maximum, like realistically, it's gonna be less than 30 seconds because you're still hitting powers. The other DPS might not be doing weapon tax because you'll get the regen from your weapon taps, etc. So. Uh, that 30 second window is going to be a lot less so it's like you know if player a gets a big gun 20 seconds faster than me but it doesn't crit um or it does crit and mine crits uh that window the whole time that he was getting his big gun i'm doing more damage because my crit chances are higher each time now the other reason i use it is like if we go uh, the mini nuke animations uh keeps you in place so if i hit mini nuke i can't walk forward i can't walk backwards i can technically jump uh, so if we hit mini nuke and then I try to like jump around like that, you'll see like I'm, I'm still in that same position, but I can't, I can't block. Like, so say if I'm a wave is hitting or a skull attack, it's not like I can hit mini nuke and block. I have to wait for the actual mini nuke animation to finish. But when I use critical instincts, uh, basically it's, it's basing the animation off that. So I can block pretty much right away after using it as well as I can hop around. So it makes me a lot less vulnerable. So if I go back into it here, we'll wait for the cooldown. If I'm jumping, I hit it, I can still keep moving, I can keep running. If I'm running away from the boss and he does a skull attack, I can pop, I can clip uh, mini nuke. Like, yes, you're going to be able to do it every, like, mini nuke is 6 seconds, killer instincts is 12, so it's it's every other time. But still, during that every other time, you're a lot less vulnerable. So I can hit it and block almost right away, right after the animation, because it's... It's based off the animation of ki um, critical instincts, or uh, killer instincts, sorry, instead of mini nuke. So I'm a lot less vulnerable in boss fights. I can hit it and keep running rather than being stuck in that animation. So it, it helps me as a DPS because I'm less vulnerable in mini nuke when I'm clipping it, as well as it's, uh, it's a bit faster as well. So in terms of this is going to be the uh, range loadout or AOE range loadout. So in terms of that, I'm using Shrapnel Grain Launcher, Mini Nuke, Killer Instincts, which I'll explain in a second, Chain Gun, Rail Guns, and then Big Gun as a Supercharge. Uh, the only other option, well not really option, but you can technically run Flak Cannon if you want. Flak Cannon does more base damage than Shrapnel Grain Launcher. Um, also it has higher crits. The only thing is Shrapnel Grain Launcher is your Supercharge Generator, so I'm going to be getting more big guns, uh, well not so more big guns, faster big guns, over the course of a raid than I would flat cannon. Uh, but if you're looking for, you know, better damage per se without a supercharge in question, like if you take the supercharge out of the equation, yes, flat cannon is going to do more damage than shrapnel grenade launcher. Uh, in terms of uh, cooldowns, those lines are perfectly anyway with shrapnel six seconds. You'll see in my immediate rotation, I do use flat cannon because I do need that one second cooldown for that. This sh um, shrapnel grenade launcher six second cooldown does not work uh, on my melee rotation.
Okay, so we've got the AOE rotation. Uh, it's basically just going to be 1 through 5. Now, the thing to note is with munitions, it's one of, if not the most, obnoxious powers on the, the sparring targets because of the knockdowns, the pushbacks, the, the all the CC moves from shrapnel grenade launcher, from mini nuke, from chain gun, you make powers miss. Uh, so that's why I got to do a few parses here. Uh, Might is going to be 27430 base uh, with the artifacts, uh, escalating Might, obviously. So let's get into it here. Uh, clip. So you'll see chain gun's going to push them back. And I want to do rail guns. It's going to miss the target on the right. On the, on the far right side sometimes because railguns is, is pretty linear but uh you know it's 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 just a case of uh, a sparring target uh rotation not equating exactly what it's going to be in raid damage because it, the things are going to miss but uh that's why i've got to do 10 second parsers just so you can see the fluctuations uh and obviously when a parser dips like you know when you saw like 19k there obviously that's when something missed and when 26k, that's when some, the, when the powers hit, actually. And I've got a controller here trying to help me here as well. Because normally I would just do like a couple of rotations just to show you, but I've got to do many just to show you. Like, yeah, C Chain Gun didn't even hit that sparring target on the far left, so it's like, you know, what, what can you really do? It's uh, one of those cases where you just have to trust that uh, it's actually beneficial. Okay, in terms of melee, uh, this is where it's going to vary once again compared to my other ones. Now, in terms of munitions melee, explosions radius is about the same as smoke bomb. Um, so, really, it's really raid dependent. Uh, if you've got a raid like, say, Zui or stuff, um, even SSE, you don't want to use this melee rotation because the ads are too spread out. You're going to miss with explosion and it's going to end up being a damage loss. But say, like Penny, Escape, uh, like older raids where you can basically jump right in the middle of the ads, not have to worry about dying at all, and basically you're on top of the tank the entire time, uh, like JFAE, stuff like that, like older raids, this is the rotation is going to serve you better than the range one. Uh, but in terms of uh, explosion, if, if you're in a raid where the ads are going to be spread out or you're going to be chasing ads or tanks are going to be pulling them, don't use this one. Just use the range rotation. It's going to be tried and true, but if you want to pack out a little bit higher damage, uh, this is going to be the loadout that's going to do it. That's mini mini new clip with killer instincts, flat cannon, chain gun, and explosion. You can't use shrapnel because of the cooldown. You need flat cannon, uh, the one second cooldown, because you'll see... In the rotation video, I'm using it uh, flat cannon as my basically my stip band move just to make sure that the cooldowns line up. Um, and because flat cannon has some good burst damage as well, uh, even though I'm overriding the burning dot, doesn't really matter. I'm just going for the the burst damage of flat cannon to be helpful. And I'm using neo venom boost because I'm trying to crank out as much damage in a short amount of time. And with the the, the ki um, Killer Instinct's Critical Chance and Neo Venom. Uh, you can get some pretty good, like really good numbers out of Mini Nuke and Explosion. Like Explosion, I've seen crit for, uh, I think you'll see it, and actually in the Penny video, uh, that'll be up later. Um, I crit like three different ads for 30k each explosion, so you know it's 100k damage just from one explosion. But it, it's, once again, like I said, it's, it's very raid dependent. I've tried using this in Zooey. It's been a damage loss. TTBE. Like, you could use it the first boss in TTBE. Uh, those of the ads are, are pretty close together. But if there's any case where you're unsure, stick with the range rotation. Uh, that's going to be tried and true and consistent damage, where the melee damage is, is more raid dependent. Okay, this is going to be the melee rotation. Once again, it's going to be 1 through 5, and once again, it's going to be kind of awkward to get accurate parses here just because of all the friggin' CC moves. Um, it's going to be a little bit different uh, in terms of the cooldown, so I'm going to use Flak again there, and then Flak again before Chain Gun Explosion. This is just to the uh, make sure the cooldown's lined up. But it's, as you can see, it's really friggin' 
awkward to test this, but you saw it like the 27k, which is uh, quite fair for like if I was buffed in a raid, that 27k would probably be closer to 30. So it, it just boils down to don't take these numbers as like you know as the holy grail. They're going to be less as of what you're going to get in the raid, and that's simply because of how the freaking sparring targets work. It's pointless, they shouldn't be moving at all. But that's the melee rotation. Okay, in terms of a single target rotation, uh, it does change slightly as munitions. Uh, now, the, I would, it, it all depends on the fights. Like, say, um, say like Zooey second boss, I, would, I wouldn't use this rotation because it's basically two single target. I would use my range rotation because there's multiple bosses. But say, you know, Manta, SSE, TTB, Penny, everything, when there's, there's only uh, one boss or maybe some adds, this is rotation is going to be. Uh, what you're going to want to use. And that's heat vision, laser net launcher, chain gun, mini nuke, uh, clip with killer instincts. And that big gun is your supercharge because it's a single target. So, you know, you hope that big gun crits. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, whatever. So basically, the, the rationale behind this is basically heat vision sets up your burning dot. You're going to cancel it after the second tick, so about two seconds. So just count like one, two, jump clip. Then you're going to laser net launcher. Laser net launcher is going to set up another burning dot. So heat vision and burn laser net launcher at the exact same time. So you have double burning dots. Then because burning, you get chain gun double ticks, and then obviously the mini new AI. So what I mean by that, so if I so if I do heat vision and then laser net, you see I got the double burning ticks uh, from those two powers. Now heat vision's uh, dot lasts longer. That's why you're only seeing single ticks now. So basically, what I, you'll see in my rotation is basically I do heat vision, laser net, chain gun, and then I do laser net again before I do mini nuke. So basically, what that does is it refreshes the bur the shorter burning dot of laser net launcher, and then laser net launcher is pure single target. You know, you can easily it's like uh, like lift and um, Einstein ray stuff like that of other powers like taser pull like laser net launcher uh, can hit up to 30k on crits, and it's purely single target. So that, that's basically why I'm using it twice in my rotation, is just to basically refresh the dot, which you'll see in my rotation. Okay, we got the single target rotation, same thing, 27, 430. Yes, the only thing that changes is I use the rifle, the rifle grenade, uh, the rifle tap is very hard hitting on single target uh, compared to the other weapons. It splits after two targets, so that's why you know you don't want to use rifle for AOE damage. Just use it for single target. Uh, so we'll, the rotation is one through five as well. Uh, but you're going to be using uh, multi net launcher clipped again after chain gun before mini nuke. Basically, like I said before, that refreshes your burning dot. So heat vision canceled after two. Multi net again. Then we're clipping that. One, two, jump. One, two, jump. And that's pretty much there. So you can see there, consistent 15s. You know, you dipped to the 12 just because of the, uh, you know, some of the inconsistencies with the crits. But, uh, you know, 13, 15, you'll be getting 
with uh, say if you're in a raid you're actually when you're taking the mic cola as well as uh, you'll be you could be running a LexCorp trinket uh, I don't run robot psychic for range I use the bat drone but you know that's gonna throw off the parsers because you guys don't all have bat drones but you could run you know the LexCorp bot for pets that's gonna be the same thing with the cooldowns Okay, in, in terms of supercharges, uh, Magician says mount a turret and big gun. Uh, you'll see in my melee rotation, I use Neovenom. Uh, that's just a preference. I find Neovenom does more damage for me in those melee situations because um, I'm trying to push out as much damage as I can in a short period of time for melee on adds, etc. That uh, mount a turret is not as helpful. Uh, I feel like I can do more damage to mount a turret with Neovenom with that melee rotation. So that's why I use it there. Uh, but in terms of um, supercharges, the big gun is still one of the top supercharges in the game, but that's only if it crits. And what I mean by that, think of big gun, think of big gun like being in the friend zone. So you're you're talking to a girl, uh, you're hanging out with her all the time. You know you think she really likes you. And big gun, that's like what and big gun crits. It crits for like you know four hundred k, five hundred k, and you're feeling great. Uh, and then you go to ask her out, and she says, oh, I, you know, I thought we were just friends. And then you feel like shit, and that's what Big Gun's like when it doesn't crit. Um, you'll see in, in the next video, in the next clip, Big Gun has a base damage of about 200k on a single target. Uh, and a base damage, because it didn't crit on my A target either, base damage is about 400k. So, so if you're on a boss fight, and your Big Gun hits for like you know, 170, 200k or whatever, you just spend 100 you know, 100% supercharge on 200k damage, and that hits really subpar. But then it crits and it hits for like you know four or 500k because big gun, big gun is the best single target um, supercharge in the game if it crits. That's why big gun is so crit dependent. That's why I don't care about running big gun three or, or shrapnel in my uh, single target or melee rotations because big gun is not the be all and end all. If it crits, it's great, but through my experience, it doesn't crit all that often. Um, like, yeah, it feels great when it does, but in the case where it's just a regular hit, then, you know, pretty much every 100% supercharge does more damage to Big Gun if it doesn't crit. So that's why, that's, uh, Big Gun is like a love-hate relationship. Okay, on to the controlling side of the video. Uh, like in my previous guides, I've touched on the controlling side very in-depth in my uh, complete controller spec and my uh, more previously in my control and new meta guide. Uh, so if you want to take a look at those, if you need to have more um, focused information on controller, but we'll go through for munitions anyway. Uh, I've used the same munitions controlling loadout in a very long time. Uh, shrapnel and grade launcher, your supercharge generator, as well as your attack debuff, uh, reloads your obviously your recharge, smoke grenade launcher for your defense debuff, multi net launcher for your pull, as well as your heal debuff, and then survival is your shield, active protection system is your supercharge. Uh, the drawbacks of munitions controlling is that the crowd control abilities are very weak. The supercharge ability is what you spam the most, but it's just a knockdown, which is not very good at all. Uh, smoke grenade launcher is a stun, but it's a very weak stun. It used to be closer to a hard stun in the past before revamp. Now they changed it, so it's, you know, it stuns them, and then like a, a strong breeze will blow them out of the stun, so really it's kind of pointless. Multi-net launcher is still a hard stun. That's still your best stun, as well as a pull. 
um, that's what you want to use. Like say, say if you're approaching a big group of ads and the tank's not there yet, or you don't trust the tank to stun them right away, uh, just fire a multi-net launcher first. Uh, the cooldown's you know instant anyway, so it doesn't matter. So fire that. So when the tank gets there, all the ads are going to be controlled anyway. Uh, in terms of a spec, uh, like I said, the exact same thing in my previous videos. Hybrid is always what you're going to choose as controller. Uh, might and power max out the whatever amount of skill points you have, and then put the rest into VIT. Uh, in terms of your weapon tree, I'm only taking enough to take Solar Flame. And in terms of iconic powers, uh, since I have 404 skill points, I've got one to spare. Uh, I take Amazon Deflection just in case a group is struggling. Like, say you're doing tentacles or something, and they're just really, the healers are struggling. They're not doing the tentacles. Like, it's nice to have Amazon Deflection in your back pocket just to change your spec uh, because that's the strongest shield in the game. Doesn't matter what role you are. But in terms of an actual control and rotation, exact same thing. Uh, you'll see it differ in my videos because because of my power pool uh, with all the artifact buffs, uh, my power pool gets close to about 50k. It's a little bit less because I'm spec for DPS. So I'd usually have uh, VIT A and B in there as well as uh, power mods in my head and shoulders. But uh, the actual rotation that you're going to follow without trying... like The only reason to spam, like you'll see in my quantum videos, is because... If you're spamming your debuffs on cooldown, you're earning more supercharge faster and and uh, more efficiently. If you've got the power pool, you can pull that off. If not, just use this rotation, which is going to be solar flame, go to your supercharge generator, then your defense debuff, then your heal debuff, then you're going to do it again, supercharge generator, and then you're doing recharge twice. And by the time you've done that, you're cool that your debuffs are going to be off, then defense, then heal. Supercharge generator. One, two, and start the rotation over again. That's that's what you're gonna do as controller. And you can see, even with being spec purely for DPS, uh, my power pool is not hindered whatsoever. I'm still sitting around, you know, 30, 40 percent power, uh, and I've got sodas. I've got, you know, everything that I can to take care of that. Uh, in terms of trinkets. Uh, same. I run the same thing. You can run. You could run um, the CC trinket if you want for controller. It's going to give you about two thousand power back, which is great. You could also run the LexCorp trinket. Um, I run Orbital Strike just because. You could run Psychic, whatever. But you should always have the Summer Event trinket because that's going to give you power back on its summon and on its management. Uh, and then obviously the Troll trinket and Spy Drop. But uh, that's it, guys, for the controlling side.